Okay, I think it worked. Yep. Cool. So thanks for everyone who is attending uh, this study broad fair today. The session is the return student Q and A panel. Um, so it'll just be a pretty informal way for you to ask any questions you might have for return students. Um, we'll start with introductions from each of the panelists, and they can talk about their experiences, um, where they went, what it was like. Um, maybe they have some pictures or anything they'd like to share. And then we'll open the floor to questions. Um, you're free to put your questions in the chat and I can read them out. Um, otherwise, you can also just unmute yourself and speak them to the room. Um, and if you don't have any questions right away, I do have some extra questions I can ask just to get the conversation flowing. Um, so why don't we get started? Um, Carson, do you want to start or are you guys doing it together? Sure. Uh, my name is Carson Hag. Uh, I'm a marketing and professional sales major uh, up here in Duluth. And I traveled to Vecpa, Sweden with Rachel. Her and I actually went in the fall semester last year, which we got super lucky because of Corona. Uh, through that time, we, went, we were at Linnaeus University, which is actually one of the more prestigious schools in Europe and the uh, northern parts of Europe. Uh, and in that time, we traveled to Finland. Uh, I, I know Rachel did a lot more uh, solo travel than I did, but I, I went to Finland, Germany, uh, the Baltic states, as well as uh, Norway and everywhere around there. It was amazing, yeah. So Rachel, do you want to give your introduction? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So my name is Rachel and um, like, Carson said, I studied abroad in VECWA in the fall of 2019. Um, I'm a human resources major here at UMD, but I took management courses in um, Sweden at that university, and I traveled to seven countries and 17 cities, um, and I basically did all my travel solo except uh, one trip up to the Arctic Circle, so yeah. Solo travel, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, so I'm Matt. Um, I'm working as a peer advisor in the office now. Um, I studied abroad in New Zealand in Hamilton um, a couple years ago now for fall semester. Um, Hamilton is on the North Island, um, kind of where Hobbiton is. That's usually the one thing people know about New Zealand, so kind of in that area. Um, yeah, I did a lot of travel in New Zealand, um, so I pretty much did the whole country top to bottom. Um, I went to Australia for a week. Um, and did most of my travel in groups and lots of hiking. Um, while I was there, I took mostly cultural classes to learn about the Maori people that are indigenous in New Zealand. And then I took one science course in oceanography. Um, so, yeah. Um, I can start us off with a question, but like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or just um, pop into the conversation. Um, but the First one I wanted to start with would just be just an easy one, maybe. Um, what is your favorite either moment, view, or experience from your whole trip? Ooh, Rachel, you wanna start? Oh my goodness, that's so hard. Okay. Um, I think, I guess one of my favorite moments or experiences was my very first trip when I was there. I took a trip to Prague in the Czech Republic um, and I picked that city just because I had heard it was cheap. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> um, and so I stayed in a little hostel and then I signed up for an Airbnb experience. So that's like where people, local people can show you around. Um, and I signed up with this guy who had rave reviews and I ended up meeting two girls from California um, on that trip and so it was a solo trip but I met them on the first day and we actually spent the rest of um, the weekend together in Prague which was really cool and exciting and Prague ended up being one of my favorite cities and I'm still in contact with those two girls from California um, now they're like 26 year old adults with full-time jobs but um, just really cool experience to be able to meet other people and um, just travel and it's it's crazy how connected you can get um, when you travel. So cool. I've never tried the Airbnb experience thing. I did it a lot and it was, it's like $20 or, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's always cheap because it's local people. I did a beer tour in Germany, which was really cool. Um, there's just really, really fun stuff and it's a lot cheaper than going to museums or doing like the typical thing. So right, yeah. Airbnb in itself is just a great way to like get cheap places to stay while you're out there too. 
I recommend that over finding hotels or even hostels, really. Yeah, I booked, if I stayed in a hostel, I booked all my hostels through Airbnb so that you have that guarantee um, of like, if something went wrong, Airbnb will cover you. So that's mm -hmm. a good thing too. So Carson, do you have a favorite in mind? Oh, which one? Um, <laughs> we did this big trip set up through uh, the International Student Club at Linnaeus where we went to Finland uh, and we went all the way to the very top. Actually, one of the day trips that we did, we actually went to the most, the Arctic Ocean in Norway at the very top of Finland. Um, but while I was up there, one night it snowed like two feet and there's a ski resort where we were staying. And so I decided uh, that day I was gonna go and try skiing up there. And uh, I got there and I was the only one to show up at the ski resort. So uh, I put, rented some skis and I went out and for three and a half hours, I was the only one on a ski hill with two feet of fresh powder. And it was the best skiing I have ever done in my entire life. It was amazing. In, fin uh, in Finland, up at that resort, it's actually the most northern ski resort in the world. And uh, they're famous for all of their pine trees having this like thick coat of pillows, like pillow snow on top. Uh, if you go on Instagram and look it up, it's like world renowned. So I was just skiing through these trees that were just caked in snow. It was super cool. Awesome. Uh, Kaylee, since you're back, do you want to give you a little introduction of yourself, where you studied, um, your experience, any highlights? And then the question I just posed was a favorite moment or view or experience, um, any highlight? Yeah. Hi. I can only stay for a couple minutes because I'm going to get kicked out of the library room, but I'm Kaylee. I studied abroad fall semester of my sophomore year in Birmingham, England. Um, yeah, it was one of the best experiences I've ever been on. I'm a sociology major, so I was able to study social policy over there. Um, favorite experience or view? Probably I ended up actually doing like one of the Airbnb tours too, and I ended up getting a private tour of Edinburgh, and that was so cool. We went to like a bunch of different unique spots. Um, and then we also got up really early one morning and we had St. Peter's Basilica all to ourselves, which was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, those are probably my favorite experiences. That sounds awesome. Uh, and I should say too, um, if you have any questions that you don't get into the chat in time or if something comes up later, um, feel free to email the study abroad office. Um, and if you have one specific one of the panelists, we can touch with them um, or get you answers. Um, so I'll just end. So my favorite experience um, for my trip in New Zealand, um, down in the way South Island, they have fjords. Um, and it's pretty like untouched by civilization. There's no phone service. There's not really anything. Um, so I was able to do a three day trek um, on the Milford trek down there. Um, and so we kind of, we had big backpacks. We brought in everything and we stayed at huts and it was winter season. So the huts didn't have like power or gas or water. Um, so it was pretty basic, but it made it a lot more fun. Um, and we saw tons of, tons of amazing views and we got super lucky because it rains over down there and we somehow managed to get four days of clear skies in a row. So we never got rained on. So that was amazing. Um, so we have one question from Tina um, and she asked, would you guys recommend going for a full semester or a full year or just for a semester? Does anyone have major thoughts on that? I went just for a semester, um, just because that was the way it worked out with the program that I chose. But if I could have gone for a full year, I definitely would have. Um, I just had such a great experience and I didn't want to leave Sweden as much as I missed home. Um, now that I'm back in the US, I was like, why did I ever leave? I should have just done the rest of my degree there. So if you have the opportunity to do a full year, I would say to go for it because it's honestly, it was cheaper for me to be studying in Sweden and I had a lot more fun there. Um, not to say that UMD isn't fun, but I had a lot more fun in Sweden and I am 
I'm hoping to go back eventually um, at some point. So if I could have stayed a year, I definitely would have. I would, I would say also go the full year. Uh, what I would look into before deciding that would be if they offer all the courses that actually progress your degree first, because normally you can take your one semester and hit some of the like uh, classes that don't really relate to your major per se, but also if the, the college that you're going to does have classes that fill in requirements for your major, then it's definitely an option to stay for a full year. Because for me, I, I could only do six months because there wasn't enough classes that could progress me to graduate on time. But other than that, for sure, six months is not enough time to really even fully get the taste of Europe or wherever you decide to go in the study abroad experience. Yeah, and I would just add, um, as far as planning goes, um, we have had people that, you know, they plan for one semester, they go and they just fall in love and they just don't want to come back. So they'll plan classes for the next semester while they're abroad. Um, it's a lot harder to do that because you're halfway around the world and you're planning classes between there and UMD, um, but people have done it. So don't feel like if you don't feel like if you're choosing like now between a semester and a year, like that's your final answer. Um, like if you choose a semester and you go and you're like, you know what, I need to stay, like we can make it work. It'll just be like, you know, a little bit of paperwork. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing, uh, I felt the same way. Like I didn't want to come home at all. Like I would have stayed another year. Um, I just couldn't do all my classes for a whole other year there. Um, I would have missed out on a couple back here. Um, but if you save like lib eds and stuff, you know, sometimes you have more than two semesters worth of lib eds, so you could just do a full year and crank out general classes all year long. Um, so that's always an option. Um, I have a similar question written down that are, you know, on the theme of classes. Um, so what were classes like in relation to UMD? Um, what were your experiences in terms of like homework and tests and the classroom experience? Um, and also, if you want to talk about like what types of classes you took, like if you did major classes or if you did lib eds or if you just did um, fun classes, um, whoever wants to start. I, I know Rachel and I had very kind of different classes that we took, but um, I don't know. Sweden was a little different than other European classes for sure. We had a modules or like, yeah, module system. So you only had one class going for a whole month. And then once that month was over, you moved on to another class. So you only had one class going. I made a little bit of a mistake and actually signed up for a master's course. So I was taking master's level classes for bachelor level degree back here. So it was a little tougher. I would say we had to write pretty decent sized papers, but we only had one test and they gave you plenty of time to work on. It was a lot more uh, free time, learn on your own style uh, schooling compared to like here where you have to show up to class every day. It was more show up to class like once or twice a week for uh, classes and then teach yourself on your own free time uh, and work on your papers for sure. Yeah, so I took um, a management course um, and then that course was broken down into four modules. So I only had to sign up for one course and then it ended up transferring back to UMD as 15 credits. Um, so like Carson said, you're only taking one class at a time. And for me, um, it would be maybe class once or twice a week. Sometimes the professor would take the week off and say that the, you didn't have class. Um, and then it was a lot of independent study and all my exams were essay based questions, which I thought were easier for me to do because I was a native English speaker. Um, and a lot of the students in my classes were native um, Swedish speaking. And so it was a little bit more difficult for them to articulate their thoughts in English. Um, but all my classes were taught in English. And then, um, you know, you can get the textbooks, but they weren't used like a lot. And a lot of the students would just share the textbooks because they would take pictures of it in the library. Um, so it's a lot, I don't know if chill is the right word, but it's a lot more chill than um, classes here. It's like you're focusing on one class at a time and it's maybe once or twice a week. And then you have to write an essay at the end of it and that's it. Um, but I still feel like I didn't lack in learning or anything. It was just a totally different style. 
Um, and then additionally, if you plan on Sweden, they have some free Swedish language classes that they offer at the school too, um, which I did not participate in, but that's another cool thing that they do there. Um, you can take an addition to your normal classes. Kind of going off of what you said on like learning, I felt like I learned so much more through the classes and how they were taught in Sweden than any class I've ever taken at UMD. The way they kind of invest you into what you're doing and the material that they're teaching, uh, you apply it into more real world uh, events. Even with like the papers and stuff, we wrote up like, one of mine was international marketing. So how to work with uh, people from other nations and like work around cultures and stuff like that. We had to uh, write up a whole paper on doing a marketing plan in a different country and how we would take into their customs and everything like that to like uh, cater to their lifestyles and stuff like that. It was super interesting. I've never, I've never learned more than the six months I was in Sweden. That's awesome. Uh, Kaylee, did you want to touch on Birmingham classes? Yeah. Um, so it was a little bit different and it was more that you take like three or four modules at a time like you do here, except for there's seminars and then there's like also lecture times. So I would have one lecture for each of my classes and then I would also have a seminar, which is basically just like a smaller section of the class and you just discuss a reading which was really cool. Um, and then I just had one big paper that I had to write for each class at the end. And so that definitely was a lot of stress because your whole grade was based on how well you could write like 5,000 words. So it definitely was an adjustment that way. Um, so like, yeah, definitely in England, like there is a little bit harder curriculum, but it's definitely worth it. And it was so cool because I got to study classes for my major and just to see like how the whole English perspective and everything differs from ours was super cool. Like I learned about the prison systems and like, I don't know, just inequality and stuff. And it was really cool to get that cultural knowledge other than America. And, and everyone. Uh, with those uh, kids going to Sweden, Matt, do you want to give yeah. them an email or something and we uh, can yeah. contact with them? Yeah, I can send them your email if they don't um, show up today and then let them know that you're happy to answer any questions. Okay, because oh, yeah. Rachel and I got some pro tips for Vicka at least just when they get there. Yeah, like I have that whole presentation because last semester, oh, like yeah. in the beginning, Gerilyn kept giving people my email, which was like totally fine. But then like I had like all these people, I was like, okay, let's meet at the coffee shop. So I just started making a presentation because I was like, I have no idea what to tell you. So here, watch yeah. these, pictures and these slides and like, it's like second nature to me. I'm like, oh, obviously classes are only one at a time, but I don't think to tell people that. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. Well, we have a couple more that have just joined, so um, we can uh, keep doing some more questions. Uh, just for those few of you who joined, um, if you want to unmute yourself and ask questions, feel free to. Otherwise, you can totally type them in the chat and I can read them out to us. Um, and in case you haven't thought of any right away, I can just pitch a question right now to get the gears rolling. Um, so let's go with, um, ooh, so what was one of the biggest, like, takeaways or lessons learned or, like, just something you brought home with you, like a piece of advice maybe, um, something like that? I can start. I have... The biggest one for me that I learned and took home with me from studying abroad was like, don't worry, I guess, like you'll get there in the end or um, like, obviously when you go abroad, you will have times that are difficult or you're like not sure what to do. Like we went camping once and we ended up lost in the woods with no service in the middle of the night and had no idea what was going on, but I'm still here. and. I always look back at like that time and I think it's probably one of the funniest nights that we had and one of the most memorable. And even though at, in the moment it was like, kind of not fun, I think looking back, like I wouldn't trade it in. Um, so I would just say like embrace any difficult times on your study abroad trip because you'll probably look back at it and realize it was actually pretty funny or pretty stupid. Um, and it's just like a good memory to have. 
Hmm. Well, I, I was thinking the one that I always tell my my friends when I come back and stuff is uh, the the relationships that you build while you're out there. You you realize that like it doesn't matter where you're from. The people that you're meeting are kind of on the same boat as you as being like uh, in a new area, situation, lifestyle, culture, and they all have their own cultures and lifestyles that they bring. Uh, to the group, but in the end, you're all just the same people in the same experience, having just a blast at the same time. Like the relationships I've built will last forever, and I, I wouldn't trade any of the memories that I've made with these people because, um, I don't know. It's just it's exciting to know that I have friends all over the world now, and I, I look forward to like go and visit them and meet their friends and see how they live and their lifestyle and as well when they come visit me I can kind of show them the Minnesota lifestyle and, and what we do there. Yeah I think for me the biggest lesson was like just to not be afraid of anything so I just tried to go into the study abroad and like go in head first I was like I'm only going to be here for five months so I need to make the most of it so I was like well nobody wants to go with me I'll solo travel first and like I was terrified I was pretty terrified I'm going to a new country I, I don't know how to like use their money I don't know what language they speak I didn't know anything but I just went for it and I think that's where like the most growth comes when you study abroad is just doing things that are uncomfortable or unfamiliar and then you just learn so much and it, it just enriches like your life in general and I think it also taught me to just value all the cultural differences living in our like off campus housing it was all non EU students and so I got to learn a lot from other cultures about like what kind of foods they eat or what they do in their free time and it's just so interesting and fascinating and now like Carson said like I have friends from all over the world that I can just check in with and it's really cool to have that experience. You, you talked about uh the like ordering food in a different language. That is the most stressful thing of my entire life is going in. There's that pizza place right by the apartments where we live. The The owner didn't speak any English. He only spoke Swedish and Italian. Oh and I knew, I started like panicking when I went to order a pizza and I ended up getting a pizza that was banana and onion. And it was like the worst pizza I've ever had, but that's like a thing in Sweden. They put banana on their pizza. It's so weird. It was so bad. We, we so went bad. there on our very first. Carson and Matt, who I think he's graduated from UMD now. He's a master's student. That's where we went on our first night. In yeah, Sweden. it was that place. Yeah. And he like didn't speak English and he didn't speak like he didn't speak Swedish. So we couldn't even use Matt's little like Swedish book. It was like, because ah! he didn't, we weren't good enough and he didn't have any idea what we were saying. <laughs> pizza was good we got pretty good pizza that night it was good oh that's awesome with parker's question uh with the fair amount of other countries on my floor there i was well there was one other minnesotan who was from a different school the odds of that were super low but other than that i had people from my friend boris from russia and from india uh Berna Lee from south africa uh and to this day we have a group chat running that is full of memes and weird cultural jokes and stuff that we bring up. And um, it's, it's weird because the time zone differences make it so it's a little off. I wake up in the morning and I'm getting memes from like three in the morning. Uh, but it's, it's amazing that we can still keep up with each other, especially with today's technologies and stuff. So you definitely keep talking to them. Yeah, I, so a lot of, um, I met a lot of students that were from different parts of the U.S. on my study abroad experience. Um, and I will say, um, in terms of the second question, is there other study abroad students that you meet? Um, I felt like I met lots of study abroad students, and I think it's because all the study abroad students kind of have the same goal when they go abroad, and that's to, like, get out, see the country, like, do as much as you can. Like, you always want to be on the run and, like, learning new things. Um, in my experience, I found that the locals, I still had a lot of local friends and they were awesome, but they didn't always want to like drive halfway across the country on a Saturday just to see something because they maybe already have seen it. Um, so I would say I did most of my traveling during my program with study abroad students because they were the most 
willing to spend money to go do things in time. Um, as far as keeping in contact, um, I still have a couple group chats, like Carson was saying, with um, other students I met. And I actually had the chance to meet up with some of the other American Study Abroad students. Um, we met up in Colorado last summer, actually. Um, we have a cabin out there, so we just all went for like four days and hung out at the cabin and basically just reminisced. It was super fun. But you definitely make tons of like lifelong connections. Like they won't, they won't disappear. <laughs> yeah, I like echo all of that. I think I probably stay in the most contact with actually like the Swedish students that I met there. So I had a buddy and kind of like was in her friend group. And so I stay probably like closest to them. And then also I met a lot of Americans that I kind of text every once in a while. And then um, a few foreign friends that I stay close with and like people I met on trips and, and things like that. Cause I did a lot of solo travel. So I actually met most of my foreign friends from doing that. Um, but I also, we lived in um, housing that was all study abroad students, but they were non EU. So like not European Union um, students. So that way we got exposed to like a lot of different cultures that were super, super different from America. And then also like when you go out to the bars on campus or just are on campus, you meet a lot of those like European students. Um, but yeah, you meet a bunch of study abroad students. So it's like easy because they're all in the same boat. They're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't understand this country um, where European Union students like they can go wherever they want. Um, so they kind of they kind of know the drill and they're like could go to a different country every semester if they want to to go to school. Um, but I think it's it's really nice to be able to be in contact with other study abroad students. Like Matt said, they're much more willing to like go do things with you um because they don't live there so they have never experienced it before either there's also programs that the school sets up uh we had one that was uh vis vicqua international students association club or something along those lines where they set up programs party nights everything like that where it was just the international uh study abroad students that could show up and meet each other and kind of uh, have fun that way and definitely going to the pubs and bars and clubs at night is your best way of meeting everybody and their mother because that's where all the students go to party. Yeah, so a similar question that I could pose, I guess, based on um, where we are right now. So I would say housing is probably a pretty big factor in the people that you meet and the friends that you make, at least initially. Um, so you guys want to share kind of your housing experience like what was it like did you live in dorms or flats um what were your roommates <laughs> was that? oh rachel and i had some fun on our housing experience they put all of us in town so we weren't on campus for uh in Vecqua. we were actually in the town center in this giant apartment complex um and we were put on floors where there was 16 rooms and one kitchen on each floor. And at the beginning, it was a little bit of a hassle because different cultures cook different ways. And definitely, like, my friend Anne from India, she always had a maid uh, growing up. So, and that's, that's pretty common. So she wasn't used to doing her own dishes. So she would do what she normally did, which was, like, set it out for the maid to take care of. But there's no maid anymore. So... <laughs> Um, it took a while to get kind of used to dealing with other people's lifestyles and how they like deal with things. But in the end, it was always 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night sitting in the main living room. Everyone's just kind of chilling out, doing homework, talking. And those nights I remember fondly because it was just, I don't know, just talking about random stuff, sharing cultural views, finding out things about each other that is kind of weird to you, but to them is super normal. Really fun stuff like that. Yeah, we definitely had a housing adventure. So not being on campus, I think at first I was like a little bit confused. I thought we were gonna be on campus and we weren't, but I actually liked that being closer to the city center um, because I did a lot of travel. I was super close to the train station. So I just got on the train or walked up to the train station and got on the bus to go to campus. And I never had a problem with that. Um, we we're also really close to the lake, which was super nice. So I was on, um, gosh, the seventh floor, I think it was. And I could see the lake from my room, which was really cool. Um, I lived on a floor with 
I think there was one other American and he was from New York. And then there was someone from, oh my gosh, like every country you could think of, it felt like. Um, and so that was really cool. And like Carson said, there was an adjustment of kind of how they cooked. And like, there was this kid who would always leave raw meat out on the counter, which I was like, disgusted by but you know you just like get into your routine and you had your own little locked fridge um and then like Carson said like the shared kind of common area and table and then you have in your room your own bathroom and bed and chair and desk and then a shared laundry room um but you just kind of get into the groove and so if that doesn't sound appealing to you like it will like once you're there like it's a good way to like just build a sense of community and I learned a lot about cooking like cool things that I could do with my food just because people are like, what are you doing? Cause I would just make chicken and vegetables. And so, you know, like learned a lot about spices and how to cook with other cultures. And I think that was a real bonus of having off-campus housing because then we had a shared kitchen. So pros and cons, but I definitely recommend um, living in like housing with other study abroad students if you can. And our, our situation was definitely different than most cause I've talked to some of the other uh, students at UMD that have studied abroad and they get put in like a dorm room situation as well. So it's, um, you get your own dorm and kitchen shared with people in bathrooms as well. But our, ours was definitely like a, a little shocker when you first showed up and there's, you're sharing it with 16 people and you're like, oh my goodness. That was definitely in paper thin walls too. So like you can hear everybody moving in their rooms at night. But once you got into the rhythm of things, it was definitely fun to just I don't know, live with a bunch of random people from all over the world. That, that was the fun kicker. And the fire alarms. That was fun. And the midnight 2 a.m. fire alarms. Those are always great. Yeah, so um, for my experience, so uh, it sounds like you guys were more in like a flatting experience. Like it would be like an apartment, but everywhere else in the world kind of calls it a flat. Um, so for my experience, I lived on campus in New Zealand. Um, in the dorms. Um, also, a lot of other places in the world, like dorms, you don't share your bedroom with other people. So I was in the dorms, but I had my own room. Um, and I actually ended up getting on a meal plan. Um, and I just chose to do that because I went as a sophomore and I never actually like lived and cooked alone. And then I was like, you know, I don't think I want to like learn how to cook also when I'm learning how to live halfway across the world. Um, and so I just chose to do that. And I actually met a ton of people through the meal plan option as well, because um, dinner was served at the same time every night. So we would all just, everyone from my dorm, my dorm like area would end up um, eating together. So it was really like friendly and people would just like come up and sit with you. Um, and New Zealanders are pretty friendly um, in general. So like you could just kind of go to where we wanted and strike up a conversation with anyone. Um, so that's how I met a lot of my local friends and my study abroad friends. Um, what else? Uh, being on campus was really nice in the fact sense that like I didn't have to travel to school or anything. Um, it was a little far from being in town. So like if we ever wanted to go to town, we had to catch buses, um, which costed money or we had to walk about 45 minutes. Um, so that was the drawback of that. Um, yeah, I would say like housing Usually there's a couple options for you. So you just have to weigh like what is important to you and what you want to get out of it. Um, Cause there's obviously going to be bonuses and drawbacks to every type of housing. Um, so you can just look into whatever program you're looking at and see what they have to offer. Um, but I wouldn't be worried. Like I wouldn't be too scared of any type of housing because all of them are not for you um, something. And you're all in the same boat with the people that you're living with too. So if there's a problem, you kind of all get through it together. You're never, you're never truly by yourself in those situations. So once you make some friends, which takes like two days to make like solid friends, then you're, then you're set. Yeah. So another question I just have written down here. Um, uh, it's kind of a two part question. So what would your typical weekday look like once you're in like your routine with classes and stuff? And then what does your typical weekend look like during your study abroad? Rachel, you want to go first? Sure. Okay. So 
<clears throat> weekdays. So I usually had class Tuesday, Thursdays, and it would be from like two to five or like maybe two to three thirty, you know, if the professor wasn't feeling it. So basically Mondays, I would usually get up and like walk around the lake and then I come back and I go to the gym and I'd make my food for the week because I like to meal prep. So that's like what I do Mondays and then like see what my friends were doing and like maybe we'd go hang out or watch a movie like mainly like I would stay in on Mondays Tuesdays like I'd go to campus and I'd probably be on campus all day just because I already had to go there and so I would like hang out around campus get fika on campus which is like coffee and cinnamon buns and so I would do that a lot with my Swedish buddy um and her friends, we just like go get coffee on campus and talk. And that was like just kind of a fun thing to do. And then studying and going to class. And then like Wednesdays, um, if I had homework or stuff to do, otherwise it'd just like be lazy and maybe walk around the lake if it was nice out. Um, and then sometimes like Wednesday nights, I would go out again with my friends. Thursday nights, you could go to the bar. Um, it wasn't like as exciting Thursday nights. They'd have like live music. So I did that a few times, um, but it wasn't like the most exciting. Sometimes they had trivia. Um, Fridays definitely involved going out to the bar if I wasn't traveling. Saturdays also go out to the bar, um, which like it makes it sound bad, but that's like the culture in Sweden. They just love to party. So that's what they would do. Um, so that's like typical like weekend. I would mainly like go over to a friend's house and then like go out to the bar and then go home or if i was traveling which i did a lot of weekends or like weekends into the beginning of a week um then i would be traveling you know on the train or on the bus or whatever um and then travel wise like i would just do whatever i wanted to in that city and did a lot of airbnb experiences and just a lot of like walking around by myself so um the bars are definitely a big part of Swedish culture and they have bars on campus. So that was like, I don't want to say that was like a highlight, but those, those were always really fun to go to. Yeah. The, my weekends, well, it's funny because this, if you hang out with the, your Swedish friends, it's like Wednesdays, there's two different, there was two different uh, on campus student bars slash club. It was always a bar on the top or the bottom or top floor for one. And then the club was at the bottom. So you kind of shifted between the two as the night went along. Um, but Wednesdays, one bar was open, the other was closed. And then Thursdays, it switched and the other one was open. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it kind of like alternated between the two. So everyone was like, uh, we're going to Sivan's tonight. And it would just explode and you would show up and all your friends and the new friends that you were going to meet that night were there. Um, if you weren't careful, you definitely got burnt out with that Swedish culture. I don't know how those kids could do it every week, but it was like four, four days a week. They were at the club until like two, three in the morning. Um, but my, my weekdays consisted mostly of, uh, I always went to campus. It didn't matter if I had class that day or not, but I was not productive in my bedroom. So I uh, wake up early and stop there is a little gas station slash convenience store like a 7-eleven here it is called uh Prespiren. and that was right by the bus hub so i pick up a cinnamon roll and a banana every morning I'll hop on the bus and go to go to class or do whatever kind of work i had to do for the day and i came back and if it was time to go shopping or whatever just knocking out chores uh, and then friday nights getting together finding out what people are up to and then heading to the bar. I don't think I have ever danced harder in my entire life than I did my <laughs> six months in Sweden, but it was definitely that in itself. Like there were some kids who just absolutely refused to go to the club at night and found themselves sitting at home. I would say a majority of my fun experiences happened by taking that extra, losing my three hours of sleep that I would have gained if I would have gone to bed at 11 and heading to the club instead. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, we had a similar experience in New Zealand, but maybe less on the, they have less of the club culture. Um, but <laughs> uh, so during the week, I would mostly just be doing classes. Um, as I said, I had a meal plan. So I would pretty much wake up. I'm a lazy person. So I wake up late, do some class. Uh, my classes were always posted as recordings. So 
if I feel like going to class, I would just hang out in bed and watch the recording from the laptop, um, go to lunch, and then after that, I'd spend most of my afternoon either outside, like in the sun, if it was nice out. Um, so I was in my room or in one of the like rec, rec rooms um, or common spaces, just doing homework and hanging out with friends. And then pretty much every night, every weeknight after dinner, I'd get together with my city abroad friends and we would just play like board games and card games. Like we, had, we played sequence for like every day for like two months. Um, like it was just like a tradition. So we would just hang out after dinner and wait for everyone else to leave the dining hall and then we'd break out the games. Um, and we'd also use that time to plan trips. So pretty much every weekend we tried to go on a trip even if it was just a small like day trip. Um, and it usually just involved uh, renting an Airbnb or getting camping gear and then getting a car or a bus. And then that's what we do all weekend, just kind of travel around. Um, we did lots of Airbnbs in the beginning and then people started running out of money. So we switched to camping um, and there's lots of free camping in New Zealand or like $5 camping. Um, so like one night we camped on a cliff over a beach for free, which was wild. Like all night you could hear the waves crashing and like my friend, one of my friends chose to just sleep like on a tarp, like out under the stars. Um, Cause you can see the Milky Way out there cause there's not very many people or lights. Um, so that sounded awesome. Um, yeah, that was our typical week, I suppose. Um, so I'm just gonna, so it's about 12.52 right now. So that's kind of the end of the first session. So thank you guys for coming. Um, if you want to stick around, we'll probably start again in like 10, 15 minutes with another session of questions. Um, but otherwise, thanks for coming. If you have any questions, feel free to email the city of our office and we can get back to you.